May the Father, may the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Billy died with Christ and rose with him in new life. May he now share with him eternal life. In life, the new church, the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet you with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed are my Father. And in baptism, the they receive the sign of the cross. May you now share your Christ's victory over sin and death. And we just place the Lord, have mercy. 
Thank you. 
also the Billy Burke, and we pray for his family and friends at this time. O God, who by the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin, prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every strain, by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So we invite you to sit down and we listen to the word of God and I invite those who are leading us in our first and second reading.
Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption of himself through Jesus Christ in accordance with the favour of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace, that he granted us in the beloved. In him we are also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hold in Christ, this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Again, just to welcome you all to our celebration of Mass today and a special welcome to the family, friends and neighbours of Billy Burke. <coughs> At this time of the year, Advent, we are waiting and preparing, or at least we should be. We prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ, the child Jesus born to us. And from the beginning of time, God had a plan. Plan of creation and a plan of salvation. We read about creation in the book of Genesis, our first reading. God created the earth and everything in it, man and woman. 
God's plan from the very beginning was that we should all live in harmony, in truth, love and wholeness. But I suppose, like many of the best laid plans, some fail. And the first failure took place in the garden on the eating of forbidden fruit. And the immediate result of this was shame and the need to blame others. It's a story that might sound familiar. Although God is annoyed in our story, he does not abandon us. In fact, maybe it was him who sold the, those leaves together in order to hide our shame. After this blip in the plan of creation, God realizes that we need to be saved, and hence the plan of salvation. So throughout time and the scriptures, we read of the many prophets who came to the people to offer guidance as to how we might live our lives. And in some cases, these people sent by God were completely ignored. And some were listened to for a while. And then, as we tend to do, we, we returned to our old ways. So then God realized that something else was needed. So he decided to come to us himself in human form, born at a stable at Christmas time. And today's feast of the Immaculate Conception marks the beginning of that part of the plan. In exactly nine months' time, on September 8th, we will celebrate the birthday of Mary, Jesus' mother. And from the beginning, Mary was unique in that she was sinless. But although sinless, she was totally human. Like all of us, she had her worries and her struggles and her anxieties. We hear them in the Gospel story, how she was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what they could be. We do, I think, take this story very much for granted. The reality for Mary and indeed for any young girl in the time of Jesus, and perhaps maybe even in her own time today, was that the good news which the angel carried was in fact not good news at all. For an unwed girl to be pregnant meant unfaithfulness, which was a crime. And in extreme cases, the sentence was death by stoning. Is it any wonder that Mary was deeply disturbed? But she pondered these words, and when she hears that her cousin Elizabeth, who was childless and unlikely to ever have a child, was six months pregnant, she forgot her own troubles. When she hears that nothing is impossible for God, she agrees to become the mother of Christ, the handmaid of the Lord. We know what happens then. Joseph marries Mary. They become refugees. And they begin their lives as parents, living homeless and rough. The last few months have been a difficult time in the life of the world. I'm sure that on many occasions you all might have asked, what can all this mean? Your dad will be sickness, his suffering, his extended stays in hospital. Your dad, who I only had the privilege of knowing since September, was indeed a lovely man. A message from Father Tomas last night said that Billy was a gentleman and it was a house that he loved to visit. In fairness, Tomas loved to visit any house that he got to in. But it's the truth. And it's wonderful that Billy managed to live a relatively long life and to live it well. After a few years in England, he returned with Helen to make a life here. As Michael said, a mechanical fitter by trade. He worked in triplets, I think, for almost 40 years. He was, as Helen says, 
a great husband, and a wonderful father to the girls and boys, and in time, a great grandfather also. He was a good neighbour, he loved life, he enjoyed the crack of pint and a sing song. And of course, his beloved, I think, a lot more, he had an affiliation with drum as well. But he loved to career, and that was one thing for certain. But I think that it's important to say that Billy was a man of faith. Talking yesterday with the family, they told me how he prayed. I suppose if we are looking in life, all our lives are bookended by faith. As young children preparing for sacraments, we learn about the person of Jesus and we are keen to have a relationship with him. For most people, I think our middle years are kind of marked by scepticism. We question everything, which is a good thing. But hopefully, we aren't influenced too much by the negativity of this secular world in which we live. We don't buy into that idea, or hopefully, we don't buy into the idea that we don't need God, that we don't have to rely on Him. And then, as we get older, we begin to realise that we do need God in our lives. We are created for him and for and by him and for him, as we hear in the second reading. Saint Augustine, the famous saint, says that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And God knows there is so much restlessness in our world today. Your dad Billy was very aware of the need of God. His reverence for Holy Communion and the sacrament of the sick on the first Friday. His prayer life. He prayed to God for all of you, for your well-being, your happiness, your success. Please carry this on. I mentioned at the beginning of Mass that during this time of Advent, we are waiting for the coming of Jesus at Christmas. But our faith also talks about the return of Jesus at the end of time. And it is good for us to take hope in the knowledge that Billy is being received into the presence of Jesus now. It is hard because Billy loved much and was loved, and it's hard to let that go. It's very important to know that the funeral literally tells us that death isn't the end, but a change. In the dark days ahead, as you all journey along your own paths of grief, remember that as we heard in the first reading, that God is always with us. He does not abandon us because we are his adopted children, chosen by him to live in his presence. We all face worries, we all face dark times. But I think it is good to be reminded of the presence of God in perhaps the most hidden parts of ourselves and in the most broken parts of our world. And may Billy Burke rest in peace. So I invite you to stand now and together we will pray for you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of four days, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and God not made, consubstantial with the Father, and three of all things were made, for us and for our salvation, and down from him, by the Holy Spirit, and the heart of the Lord to Mary, and the King Man. For our sake, he is crucified and the Lord's life, he suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven to the seat of the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in the Lord to the Lord to the
and stand standing and I invite those who are leading us in our prayer the faithful if they would like to come forward now.
graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen.
holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, for look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize that the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain the inheritance which you elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, your spouse, and the apostles, your martyrs, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our failing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and grant the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity of your beautiful church on earth, which is our defense of our walk and care and our mission, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people of the angel of your Lord. This embraces you to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and mercy of the Father, God to your son, all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Betty, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like this may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departure, brothers and sisters, we think especially of Billy's sister Mary, deceased members of the world and forward family. And to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord through whom we bestow on the world all that is good.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, even in us the wounds of that fault, from which in a singular way you preserve the Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception, through Christ our Lord. Amen. response to the final blessing is Amen. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. So we invite you all to stand now for the final prayers. in God, we have prayed together for Billy, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Billy again and enjoy his friendship. <coughs> Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Once in your daily now will sprinkle Lily's mortal remains with the holy water, a reminder of his baptism in Christ. And Billy, Billy was the sacred temple, so we will honour his mortal remains with the incense. Our response, receive his soul and present him to God of the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God in his time. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God in his Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God in his time. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Billy in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with you on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Billy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Billy and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. So in peace now, we take our brother Billy to his place of rest.